Hi, my name is Lindsay Peoples-Wagner. I am currently the editor-in-chief of Teen Vogue and soon to be transitioning to being the editor-in-chief of The Cut in New York Magazine and also co-founder of the Black and Fashion Council. Hi guys, my name is Laquan Smith, CEO and founder of Laquan Smith LLC, women's wear designer based out of New York City and I'm currently in my home right now uh, in Astoria. Okay, so Laquan, you've dressed some of the biggest names in the industry. What would you say is one of the priorities when dressing a really big celebrity and designing for such big clients? One of the priorities, in my opinion, when it comes to dressing really, really big uh, superstars or just any you know high-end clients is the number one thing for me is quality. Um, you know, it's very important for me when it comes to you know, how things are made. So Lindsay, as one of the most important voices in Gen Z fashion, how do you find the balance between activism and storytelling? I think it's always really interesting in talking about finding the balance in, you know, activism and also storytelling because you want to be able to tell other people's stories, right? And you want to be able to leave the space for narratives that are not your own and also then, you know, talk about things that are really affecting your community. And so for me, it has always been, you know, towing a really specific line. I obviously really care about diversity and inc inclusivity and not all fashion designers really care about that. And so it's it's a hard line for me as far as, you know, really caring about the industry and fashion. And, you know, we all love beautiful clothes. We love, you know, beautiful things, but then also really deeply caring about inherently making the industry more inclusive is really my own form of activism. And so I think it, you know, has been a fine line of, you know, taking a lot of designers to task, but also I think a lot of the reason why we wanted to form the Black and Fashion Council to at least, you know, create a new standard of what companies should be doing as far as inclusivity. So Laquan, how did you grow up being exposed to fashion? And was fashion always part of your life or was that something that happened as you got older? You know, I was very sheltered as a young kid. So all I really had was, you know, the women in my family, music, um, film and, you, you know, pretty much that that's it, you know, so when you think of outside of, you know, the women in my family, it was more so like the kind of music that I listened to and the women that I was inspired by that I had saw on the TV screens, you know, i.e. Little Kim and, you know, Grace Jones and, you know, I mean, so many others. I'm um, Tina Turner, like huge fan of Tina Turner. So Lindsay, who were your early role models in fashion or, you know, sources of inspiration to any fashion icons for you? I mean, we have some, we have a lot of the same inspirations. I feel like all the all the you know Diana Ross, Tina Turner, all those people just change the game and yeah. forever you, you just like the most iconic. But I remember just spending a lot of time watching Sex in the City, watching Girlfriends, watching The Hills, and I mean, culture very similar to you. Like culture for me was the way that I absorbed fashion and the way that I realized. I really want to make this part of my life and this feels like a completely different universe, but I feel like I could be part of this. Okay, so Laquan, who inspires you to be creative right now? I love working with Hype Williams. Like Hype Williams to me is like someone that's always pushing, you know, creative boundaries. Um, you know, Patty Wilson. And I actually just purchased a book uh, by author uh, Brontes Purnell, um, which is the book is called um, 100 boyfriends um, and I just think he's an incredible writer and visionary and creative. So Lindsay, what did 2020 put into perspective for fashion? Really, um, you know, we started to just question a lot of the reasons I think why we're doing certain things and I love that honestly it made us slow down to figure out okay so I don't necessarily have all these places to go but what designers, what brands are really want to support, what you know, what people am I really drawn to that I really want to continue to support throughout this. And this year, to me, it really just felt like a shift as far as really making sure that you're supporting brands that, you know, align with your own personal values and that you really feel like you're showing up. It was like, look, you know, these people can post on MLK Day, they can post their Black Square, but I really want to make sure that I'm supporting brands that really inherently care about inclusivity. So Lindsay, I would, you know, definitely love to know your perspective on, you know, what the future of Fashion Week is from an editor perspective. I think, you know, there there has been just a sense of longing to actually see the clothes and touch the material and see how mm -hmm. it works you know, on the body, which I totally miss. Um, I don't necessarily miss a lot of the street style hoopla. Uh, I don't really miss like, you know, having like people like pushing you to get into a show. And so I do think the future will be a hybrid of both. I think, you know, we'll be able to, you know, live stream things and see things digitally. But 
also, you know, editors and a smaller core group of people actually go and be able to see things. So, Lindsay, um, in your opinion, who are some Black creatives uh, who are inspiring designers right now? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm so inspired by the younger generation. I'm super passionate about it and started an initiative uh, when I started at Teen Vogue called uh, Generation Next that was really working with a lot of young designers um, who, are, who are now, you know, blowing up like Hanifa. And I'm, I'm super passionate about making sure that young designers have access to resources and are actually, you know, being able to be put on the platforms that they deserve. Um, I'm really excited to see where Theophilio goes. Um, I think he's so talented and just like incredible. And I don't think he's even scratched the surface of what he's capable of doing. Um, and I think, you know, there's just so many opportunities right now for young designers to really shine. I think, you know, a lot of times when we were coming up in fashion, it very much felt like, oh, you can only work at this corporation designing, or you want to be like the head of this at this big brand. Um, and it's just been really amazing to see young people, you know, take ownership of that and really make their own of, you know, what do we actually want to be luxury in fashion? What do we actually want the aesthetic to be, you know, when we say somebody's on brand for this? And I think just challenging all those ideals has been really powerful and really amazing to see young creatives really take ownership of that.